Man. Season 10 really just came and went, huh? It feels like just last month, the season kicked off with Ant-Man vs. Adam, and now we're already at the season finale. Time sure flies when you're watching Death Battle, huh? Jokes aside, season 10 was honestly some of the most fun I've had with a Death Battle season, period. Whether it be making new friends, being able to watch and react to a full season with said friends, and making stupid jokes, I can honestly say this year has been the best for Death Battle. But enough about that, all that sentimental and sappy stuff, let's get into the real meat and potato kings of this video. My opinions on every single episode as a whole and where I would rank them from worst to best. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you my Death Battle Season 10 Retrospective. Side note, I'm going to try my best not to go too in-depth with each episode, say for Galactus vs Unicron, as I would rather have this be in one big video as opposed to two smaller videos like last year. I should also state that all the takes in this video are mine and mine alone. It is based on my personal enjoyment of each episode. Finally. I hate talking about the post-analysis segments, I find them incredibly hard to write for unless they're really bad or really good. So if one isn't bad or one isn't really good and it's just mediocre, I'm just gonna move on, okay? You got that? Good. Let's begin. Do it again. And starting off this list is Phoenix vs Raven. Now to anyone who hasn't seen this episode may think that this is a bad episode. And to that I say... What the hell are you doing here? Go watch it for yourself and form your own opinion, dummy. Look, okay, this episode isn't bad, but in a season full of bangers, it is easily the weakest of the bunch. The analyses for both are just sort of... whatever, in my eyes. I'm honestly starting to get really bored of all the high-tier Marvel slash DC stuff. It's happened so many times that I just don't care about it anymore. It's like an unfunny joke that I've heard a billion times before. I do like the joke about Jean dying though. That is honestly some of the funniest shit in any episode of Death Battle this season. And the Liam Goose cutaway? Perfect. Love it. Outside of that though, I feel nothing. The editing is pretty good though. The animation on the other hand, it is really good. The sprite work and the effects look really good, especially the hand drawn stuff. I really like how both of the giant birds look. The Phoenix is by far my favorite of the two, it looks so freaking cool, and the voice acting is also really good. Both Corey Petit and Kira Buckland kill it as Jean and Raven respectively. Even if I think Jean's line about the white hot room is kinda dumb, not gonna lie Wiz. But as good as the animation is, and how it looks, man the action is kinda disappointing. It's another case of flying bricks doing flying brick things. All Jean does is fly, shoot random fire, use the phoenix as a battering ram, go into her dark and white phoenix forms, duplicate herself, and fire a big fuck off laser that somehow disappears in the shot after it. All Raven does is fly, use telekinesis, consume Jean in darkness, stop time, use her soul self as a battering ram, go into her dark and white raven forms, and reference the ending to Sonic 06. That's it. No matter manipulation, no time travel, no powers that make the fight super creative whatsoever. <sighs> well, at least Forevermore is a banger track. I love how it meshes the X-Men theme with the Teen Titans theme. The post analysis isn't really that good either. They used feats from Injustice, which isn't canon to the main DC continuity, and they didn't elaborate on the green cat beating the Phoenix in the right hot room. Uh, and that's really all I wanted to say. Oh boy, another cosmic high tier Marvel vs DC episode, I wonder how good of an episode this will be. Okay, it's not that bad, despite it being another high tier Marvel DC episode, I don't mind the analysis. Yeah, it essentially boils down to, wow, look how OP that feat was, that was super crazy, right? And yeah, it is tiring. But the little moments of sincerity we get in between all that cosmic gobbledygook is the stuff I really like in this episode. And the editing, it definitely amplifies all that. I especially love Surfer just chilling in space and on his board and while he just kicks his leg, it's adorable. As is Boomstick referring to Jean as the heart and soul of the Justice League while showing footage of DCAU Jean, the best Jean. Fucking fight me on that. Also, fuck anyone who says Sur Surfer Boomstick was, was unfunny. Surfer Boomstick is the best thing on this fucking planet. The animation, 
Oh, oh god. The animation, however, is not actually that bad. To get the bad stuff out of the way quickly so I can just talk about what I like, the Surfer doesn't really get to do a lot with the Power Cosmic. Jean gets to use a lot of his powers. He flies, he shapeshifts, he phases, he attempts to use telepathy multiple times, and he gets to fire his laser vision. Meanwhile, all Surfer does is fly, phase, shoot energy, and create a new board again and uses cosmic awareness. Again, where's the creativity? You literally have a guy who could do anything, all because of the power to have all the powers, and you do nothing with it? It's such a missed opportunity. That being said, I really like the opening and how it's presented in this film noir style, which I kind of wish they stuck with that through the whole animation, but that's just me. The effects look really nice, especially Jean shaped it, shifting into the enormous fuck you dragon, and the writing in this episode is fantastic, especially the ending. It is a contender for one of the best endings of the season, in my opinion. It is such an emotional ride, and it's amplified by the amazing voice performances of Cameron Nakad and Paul Guyot as Jean and Norrin, respectively. And the track, Mind Over Matter, is just beautiful when it gets to the ending. The post-analysis isn't anything to write home about, so there's nothing overtly annoying or anything I want to talk about, so... Do it again. The episode that kicked off the entire season, Ant-Man vs. Adam. Okay, so let's just get the obvious joke out of the way. <clears throat> Oh, well, the third Marvel vs. DC fight this season is at the bottom. How funny. <clears throat> anyway, with that out of our systems, yeah, this episode is probably the best out of all the Marvel vs. DC episodes. This season, at least. I really like how they cover both their stories and abilities. I learned more about ants in this one episode than I have in my entire school career. Let that sink in. Also, Boomstick relating pizza, uh, science to pizza while Wiz has an emotional breakdown about it is hilarious, and you cannot tell me otherwise. It's, it's a lot more interesting when you're talking about guys who can shrink and grow and will, and command armies of ants compared to guys who can make the entire fabric of reality their bitch. Also, the editing is phenomenal and so memorable. Yes, Ray walking looks stupid and goofy, but fuck you, I love it to pieces. Just like how I love this animation to pieces. Segways, yeah. Okay, yeah, it can be a bit janky from time to time, but outside of those moments of jank, I really like this animation. I really like the start when Hank and Ray are fighting in Hank's office. It allows the episode to get creative in its usage of the environment with stuff like the weird bird thing or the Newton's Cradle. Especially since you can't really use the rest of the environments in this episode, since there isn't a lot you can do with rocks or infinite white void. It's really cool stuff. I also like how the characters get to use their intelligence. Ray gets to blow up Hank's gun by messing with its atoms, and Hank gets his ants to discern any weaknesses that Ray may have while he continues fighting. The kind of kaiju fight in the microverse is pretty cool, and the death is brutal as hell, and I love it. Even if with how the ants emerge from Ray's body makes me think they went up his ass, and that's just cursed. The voice acting by Gavin Hammond and Chris Okawa as Hank and Ray, respectively, is also really good. Especially Hank. He sounds just as full as himself as he should. And the track is also a banger. I love how Not Actual Size not only uses the MCU Ant-Man theme, but also a fight as one from Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Do it again. And here we reach the first of many, many Potato King Ws. Kilua vs. Misaka. I was honestly not expecting to like this episode as much as I did, since I'm not really a Hunter Hunter or Certain Magical Index fan. But I'll be damned, this episode is super enjoyable. I don't mind the analyses, I think the editing is on point, and I really like how the hosts clarify how strength doesn't always triumph in their worlds. I also like Wiz geeking out about Misaka's abilities, it's super in character for him given that he's the science nerd of the two. The animation, meanwhile, it's really entertaining. To get the bad stuff out of the way, Misaka's sprite can look off when it's standing directly sideways. Kilua pulling out a skateboard is fucking weird since it comes out of nowhere. And Misaka says she has to keep her distance, but then she goes for her sword and... That's kind of the opposite of what she wanted to do there. <laughs> but 
outside of that, the animation is really good. The sprites look really nice, especially Kalua. Both characters get to show off their strategic minds more than once in this episode, like when Misaka uses Iron Sand to catch Kalua out, or when Kalua destroys the Iron Sand giant by disrupting the electromagneticness of it. Speaking of the giant, my god, it looks so beautiful in this episode. In fact, the effects in general look beautiful in this episode. I also really like the death. It plays into Misaka's superior abilities, and it looks brutal as hell. The voice acting by Giselle Fernandez and Finti Kelly as Kalua and Misaka respectively is really good. And of course, Change X of X Heart is a certified banger. No, I will not change how I said it. It is fucking hilarious. Do it again. Oh boy, I think this may be the start of my hot takes, ladies and gentlemen. So, let's just rip off the band-aid in the smoothest and calmest way that I can do for Freezer vs. Megatron. Megatron's analysis sucks! Freezer's is okay, it's your standard Dragon Ball affair, so it's good at best and slightly uninteresting at worst, but Megatron's analysis... Oh boy, where do I begin? Okay, so for starters, they do a shit job trying to convince us that Meg even stands a chance against Frieza. They give him one, I repeat, one calc the entire episode. The rest of his feats are either never elaborated on or given vague numbers like the Starscream flight speed, speed feat or the Regenesis, the Regenesis shockwave feat. The only redeeming quality about this god-awful analysis is the fact the editing and the story coverage isn't that bad. So I guess it's not god-awful, it's just... awful. So naturally, the animation is really, really good. Yeah, I like this fight. Look, the only bad thing I have to say about this animation is that the smoke effect looks terrible. That's it. The rest of the fight is a certified banger. Not only do they actually find a good use for Megatron's alt mode, <coughs> Prime vs. <versus> Gundam, <coughs> But despite being a matchup with a pretty big size difference, I think that they actually make it work. Hell, I honestly wouldn't mind if they do more matchups like it is in the future, like with Optimus vs. Superman. Even if I don't really want that happening anymore, given to the scaling issues they get for Megatron in this episode, but let's not worry about that and instead talk about something cool, really cool, the effects. My lord, this is a pretty episode. Megatron's big fuck off tank laser looks so beautiful. Almost as beautiful as the Golden Frieza transformation. Seriously, this is a top tier transformation and I love the sound effects. I also really love the Henry Stickman reference. And I can't not talk about the ending. Megatron using his speech to get Frieza so pissed off to the point where he doesn't even realize the antimatter is surrounding him. Mwah. Beautiful. Love it. And then Frieza uses his energy pieces to slice Megadon Megatron to pieces. I love that as well. I just wish I could say the same for the post-analysis. It has the same problems with Megatron's analysis, only the time they relegate Frieza's potential resistance to the antimatter into the black boxes. Why? Oh well. At least Tom Shulk was the perfect choice to play Megatron. No joke, he probably has the my favorite voice performance of the entire season. Martin Bellani doesn't sound too bad as Frieza either, but he does have a few lines that don't really work in my opinion. Do it again. Oh boy, where do I start with this one? I guess I should start with the analyses. They are... alright. I like the editing in Vader's analysis a lot. The way they cover his story is really well done after they name drop Vader. Yeah, it takes a bit of time for Vader's analysis to actually get going, but when it does, it's really good. Obito's analysis, on the other hand, is a lot better. It's basically the same, only without the pacing issues that Vader's analysis had. And it only gets better from here because this animation is awesome. I mean, what else is there to say about this animation? I guess I could start off by saying that Obito looks a bit off when compared to Vader's more realistic model. But that isn't really the episode's fault. Plus, other episodes have had similar model clashes before, and they came out great. So my main negative is already thrown out the window. Um, alright, what else do I say now? Uh, I really like the combat in this episode. Obito fights a lot like a ninja, mostly because he is one. 
rapid movement, fast strikes, the whole shebang. Meanwhile, Vader's movements are so casual, it's almost comical. I genuinely love how relaxed Vader is in this fight, and it makes the moment where he actually starts trying a lot more impactful. There is a lot of other stuff in this episode as well, like the summoning of the Ten Tails, Vader catching the Tailed Beast Bomb, Obito recognizing what Vader has gone through, and the ending. Vader seeing Padme as his vision in the Infinite Tsukuyomi is so sad it actually makes Obito killing Vader a mercy kill. Which I like a lot since Obito can relate to Vader what Vader has gone through. I also really like the voice acting. Jason Marnoka... Yeah, Jason Marnoka does a really good job with Vader, but Nicholas Andrew Louis as Obito? Okay, I gotta ask, whose decision was it to cast him as every Uchiha other than Sasuke? Because that is a good decision, because he kills it as Obito. The post analysis is also just kind of there, so I don't really have anything to say on it. It's just kind of there. Do it again. Okay, I'm not going to beat around the bush. I was not looking forward to this episode. Yes, it was the most requested matchup, period, but my hype and desire for this episode was essentially zero. Mostly due to the fact that I feel like we should have gotten this episode way earlier than we did, but also because of the fact that I don't really give two shits about Galactus, and despite me liking Unicron and everything I've seen him in, which is like three pieces of Transformers media, I knew next to nothing about him prior to watching Nemesis prediction for this episode. So not only was I going into the episode incredibly disappointed, not only do I not even care about one of the characters featured in this episode, but I have just had the worst fucking week of my entire life. I won't go into any details right now, just watch my previous video if you want to know more, but trust me, it sucked. I know a lot of you will all be like, oh, you shouldn't let outside factors affect your opinion. But here's the thing. My mood going to in into this was already as enthusiastic as a fucking brick wall with depression. So having these external forces constantly bending me more to see how long it will take me to break, yeah, that didn't exactly fucking help. Look, I'm going to be as fair as possible towards this episode, but I won't lie. This episode will always have a negative effect on me, regardless of anything. It could be the greatest thing in existence, but I would still think of it as the catalyst for my suffering. But I will push all these emotions aside and review the episode as if it were any other episode. Galactus analysis is very boring. The editing is really good, and the way they cover his story is not bad either, but the rest of it is just one massive snooze fest. Maybe it's just because I already don't care about the guy, but there was really nothing super interesting to me. Luckily, Unicron's analysis is much better. I really like how they treat Unicron as less of a character and more of an inevitability. They don't even rope- they even rope themselves into the analysis by saying that they fuel Unicron's power, and that's a really cool idea. The fight, on the other hand, I like it. Not only is it a visual marvel to look at, what with all the pretty lighting and effects, not only does it have some of the best sound design of the entire series, allowing both characters to really feel like they're planet, star, or even universe-sized, not only is it cool to see the ultimate custom nightifier bypass the aspect ratio of the animation, allowing it to feel like it really is affecting the entire multiverse, but my god, the voice acting from both Wolf Williams as Galactus and Brent Mukai as Unicron is so good. Both of them have the perfect voices for these types of characters, these super deep, booming voices that really make them feel larger than life. And their dialogue is so poetic, I really like it. But there is one teensy-weensy itty-bitty little problem. They just punch each other in the face a bunch. Look, the fight is still really good, but let's be honest with ourselves. It's all spectacle and no substance. I mean, credit where credit is due, at least they start didn't start out on a street tier scale like with Thanos vs. Darkseid. But at the end of the day, getting no insane reality warping concept destroying from Galactus versus Unicron? It's like getting no Christmas presents from Santa. It also has the problem where they say something in the post-analysis that directly contra contradicts what happens in the animation. Although I will, give them I will give them props for having Galactus hide in that pocket dimension of his when Unicron possesses the ultimate custom nightifier and uses its power on Galactus, which is what they say in the post-analysis, so good on them for that. 
So yeah, the post analysis isn't too bad. The episode is just really good, but the boring Galactus analysis and the lack of creativity in the fight is what really holds it back for me. Do it again. This episode is a straight up 10 out of 10 for having THE Satoru Gojo. Okay, being more fair and impartial, I still really like this episode. I wasn't expecting to like it this much, yet here we are a few months later, and I still think this is a banger. Both analyses are really good, even if Makama's analysis can get pretty weird. Okay, really weird. God, this is why I probably won't ever touch Chainsaw Man. But outside of that disturbing ending to Makama's analysis, they are both pretty good. But let's be real. The star of the show in this is the animation. By golly, it is really good. Not only does it perfectly nail the transitions from sprite to hand-drawn, which just makes the episode look so much nicer, but it also has some of the nicest looking sprites of the entire season. No joke, Gojo and especially Makama, for surprise, su surprisingly, they both look really good. They move fluidly, they have little to no jank in them whatsoever, and you know what? This is probably the most fun I've ever had watching a character in Death Battle since Wario vs. DDD. Gojo just oozes so much charm that it's hard not to love him. Whether he be chillaxing while falling or interrupting someone's movie experience, Gojo is just a joy to watch on screen. I do wish the same could be said for Makama, but to be fair, she thrives on those sort of deadpan deliveries that she gives in the episode. So, yeah. I guess if I had to pick a problem, it would probably be that the fact that from what I hear, Makama is out of character, which really does suck, but I don't mind it that much. I'm not really a Chainsaw Man fan, so... Eh. But tie that together with a banger animation and a decent pair of analyses for both, you get this episode. Do it again. The very first Potato King W, the one that started it all. Chosen Undead versus The Lost Dragonborn. Oh wait, scratch that. It's actually pronounced Skyrim versus Dark Souls, despite the guys on the thumbnail being in the wrong position. Whose idea was it to make this title and thumbnail not match up whatsoever? Anyway, the analyses overall are pretty good. The editing is solid, I really like how they cover both stories, and they count how much each cheese wheel the Dragonborn carries weighs. I love this series so much, man. <laughs> the fight is just as good to match as well. I love that they managed to work in the death and respawn mechanics from Dark Souls into the fight. Not only that, but we got a roll joke, ladies and gentlemen. We can end the series off right now. We have peaked as a society. So yeah, the animation is a lot of fun to look at as... Technically a newcomer to both series, I think it was super cool seeing them use a bunch of their weapons from their respective games. I especially loved the final sword fight when Chosen Undead pulled out the Moonlit Greatsword to match the Dovahkiin's door, uh, Dawnbreaker. And then hearing the Chosen Undead only to realize that is Liam Swan. You know, THE Liam Swan. A great second episode for the season. Do it again. Yeah. I put it here. What are you going to do about it? Uh, I have to tread carefully because I feel like someone is going to want my head on a spike for this opinion. Yes. I put Bill vs. Discord at number 7. Why? Fuck you, that's why! This has gone from one of my most liked episodes of the season to one I can't even stand whenever it is brought up in conversation anymore. And it's not even just the people who rave about it to no end. It's also the people who shit on it to no end. And do stupid shit like try to get a fucking banned with an online petition. At this point, I'm just so fucking done. I want to... I'm going... Uh, okay. I'm going to give my honest opinion on this episode. <sighs> the analyses are really good. No surprises there. Not only is the editing really well done but the actual content in the analysis is really fun and engaging, especially the cutaway gag in Discord's analysis. That is some top tier comedy. And the animation is just as good to boot. The sprites are really well made, the transitions from sprite to hand drawn are really freaking good, and finally, FINALLY we get a reality warping fight with actual fun and creative reality warping. This has never happened before, this is unorthodox. Where do we go from here? Okay. 
Mind melting revelations aside, this analysis and fight are legitimately perfect, and it's only amplified by the fact that the writing is really good as well with Discord using Bill's tunnel vision against him to save his friends. So I hear you typing away right now. If you think the fight and analysis are so perfect, why don't you, why don't you like this episode as much as others? Two words. The post-analysis. Wait, shit, that was three. I don't like the post-analysis. I would even argue that it's bad. Yeah, I said it. They get a lot wrong in this episode. For example, they misinterpret Discord fading away as him not being able to heal his spirit from fatal wounds, when in actuality, it was because Discord was rejecting his chaotic nature as a concept of chaos and he was becoming normal. They also say that unicorn hair absorbs energy, when from what I've been told and from what I've, I've been and from what I've been shown, it actually negates energy, so... Why the fuck did Bill get a resistance to energy absorption? They also have a bit of a double standard in the episode when they say that Bill could resist energy draining, when in actuality it was energy negation. When they mention... But when they mention the Wendigos in one of the black boxes, they say that because Discord has never interacted with them, he shouldn't know soul destruction spells. Despite him knowing every spell, so... Why? And, oh, and this is my personal favorite. They say that if Discord ever came back to life, the time frame would still be long enough to net Bill the W. Just completely ignoring the fact that Discord has time traveling capabilities. <sighs> there are a few more examples, but I think you get the gist of it. Despite all of that, however, I still think and consider this episode to be a huge passion project by the team to us. And like, honestly, I can excuse some of the things they say in the post-analysis because, hey, we're all human. We make mistakes. Those could easily just be misconceptions. Those are just like friggin' misconceptions. But <laughs> I'm sorry. What really gets me about this episode is that so many people just fucking, it's like, there's like a two-way streak. You either love it and praise it to no end, or you hate on it for no real fucking reason. And at that point, I just don't want to talk about it. It ruins my enjoyment for an episode. <sighs> Look, you can, if you really like this episode to the point where you can ignore all the flaws, more power to you. But for me, I just can't. On the other hand, if you shit on this episode for just being wrong, touch some fucking grass. Do it again. Man, if only it was Lucina versus Grovile. In all seriousness, I'm still very shocked at how I managed to enjoy this episode at all. I mean, I am by no means a Fire Emblem fan or a Berserk fan, so the fact that I managed to get invested in this episode says something. It's definitely helped out by the analysis, the editing is really good for both, and the way they cover both characters as stories is also really, really good. Not much to say on them there. The animation on the other hand, my god, this is a very nice looking episode. I love the visual effects for all of Dimitri's magic attacks, and the snowy setting really allows the bloodstains to pop out more when the characters start to bleed a lot. The action is also pretty good. Every movement from the characters feels like they're putting a lot of effort into each attack, especially Guts, given that he's a mess of fucking sword. And the sound design? Good god, the sound design is amazing! Every single hit that is landed, mainly by Guts, because again, big fuck off sword, sounds super impactful. Especially when the Berserker armor comes into play. Every sound from it is so crunchy and I love it. The ending is also really heartwarming, showing that Dimitri has sympathy for Guts and flies off to defend his soul from the demons who came to claim it. I really like that. Not only that, but the voice acting is also really good. Both Xander Mobus and Kevin Rivera kill it, pardon the pun, as Guts and Dimitri respectively. And the track? Oh my god, God's Hand is a contender for my favorite track of the season. That's how good it is. Do it again. Aw, oh, yeah, it's surfing the alligator time, baby. Yeah, for the longest time, this was my favorite episode of the season, and is it difficult to see why? 
This episode is a certified banger. Starting off with the analyses, just hearing them talk about Lilo and Stitch makes me so happy. And, to some extent, the same goes for Rocket's analysis. I basically knew nothing about the mutant trash panda from the comics, so it was very nice to learn more about him. Also, I loved learning about raccoons. I love raccoons. I think they are super adorable. I want one as a pet so badly. <laughs> the animation is also really good. I really like both the sprites for Stitch and Rocket. They look really nice. And the setting of Space Hawaii is really creative, as it allows both the characters to be in their elements, what with Rocket using all his guns he has in the forest in a reference to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and because Stitch literally lives in Hawaii, so naturally you're gonna get stuff like surfing. I also really like that Rocket understands Stitch's alien language. It allows the characters to have some pretty funny banter between them. I still really love the fact that as soon as Stitch said the phrase that I will not say out of fear of getting space cancelled, Rocket's immediate response was to get a bigger gun. He was so disgusted that he immediately thought to himself, alright, I'm gonna need to blow this guy up. <laughs> that is amazing. Just like the voice acting from Delton Engel Sorrel and Jeff Shine as both Stitch and Rocket respectively. Stitch does take a bit of getting used to, but he still sounds great overall. It's like another Wolf Williams apocalypse situation. The post analysis also isn't too bad, but it does have the same problem where they say something in the post analysis that doesn't reflect what happens in the animation. I really don't like that. Do it again. And now we get to the second Champions Ballot winner, Cole vs. Alex. Starting with the analysis, it's not bad. I see what they were going for with it having it being a sort of time capsule episode that was meant to take place in the earlier seasons, but they don't really go far enough with it. I really wish they did kind of go a little further with the whole, hey, this episode was supposed to happen a while ago, but it never did. But outside of that, it's alright. I do like how they talk about Cole as this inspirational figure to future generations and Alex as this unholy monster. <laughs> the animation is Definitely way better though. I really like how they use each character's tools and abilities in this episode. A lot of the time, they are used to counter each other. Alex uses his tendrils? That's okay. Cole uses rail grinding abilities. Cole parkours up the side of the building? Alex just runs straight up. Alex yeets a bunch of helicopters and a truck to Cole? He counters with a big tornado. We even get a sword fight with the blade arm from Alex and the, the amp from Cole. And can I just say that these effects are so damn beautiful? Cole's electricity is so bright and vibrant, it's really nice to look at. And the final melee fight before the climax is really good, showing off how much physically stronger Alex is compared to Cole. I really like this episode, and yes, it is because I'm biased towards Infamous and Prototype. The voice acting is also really good. Both Paul Guyot and Kevin Rivera as Cole and Alex respectively do a good job at voicing the characters. The track, well, it slaps. Look, I'm not normally a fan of rap, but Inhuman is one of the exceptions. Both Omega Sparks and Swats kill it with the vocals. Do it again. And now we have reached the top three. My three favorite episodes of the entire season. And starting off with number three, it's Rick vs. the Doctor, baby. Yes, this is because I am a massive Doctor Who fan, what of it? But be honest with yourself. This episode slaps. The analysis for both is really good, the editing is on point, the story coverage is very good, and the music really amplifies the impact of the words from the hosts. I definitely prefer the Doctor's analysis more, but that's just because I'm a Doctor Who fan. The animation is also really good. I am genuinely shocked that we managed to get two hand-drawn episodes in a row, and both of them turned out to be bangers. The action as well is stellar, despite one of the characters never even throwing out an attack. Seriously, every time the Doctor interacts with Rick in combat, he usually defends himself. I also really love how the Doctor is characterized. Not only do they perfectly nail his pacifism, but the little moments of him just taking in the scenery are really cute. I also love how his dialogue is ex isn't exclusive to one version of the Doctor. As I said in my review, they take a lot of lines from a lot of Doctors and merge them into what I refer to as the Death Battle Doctor. And I really like that since it allows fans of a, of a lot of different Doctors to see what they want. The voice acting from Elliot Crossley as the Doctor is also really good. Brent Williams as Rick is not bad, but he does sound a little bit off to me. Do it again. 
Goku vs. Superman 3 was probably the most out of left field pick they could have gone with. And you know what? I'm glad they did do this episode. With how the last one ended, it felt like a disrespect to the characters not to at least try again. And thankfully, trying again worked because this episode is phenomenal. The analyses for both are really freaking good. The editing is phenomenal, especially in Superman's analysis, and I really like how they tackled both their stories. Again. Not only that, but the way they covered Ultra Instinct was amazing. I really like how much emphasis they put on it when, they was, when it was brought up. The animation is also stellar. It looks really nice, it's bright, vibrant, and colorful, and my eyes like colors so I like this. The models are really good. Goku uses the Fighter Z model, which looks much better than that weird Xenoverse model from 2, and Superman uses his Fortnite model, which I find very funny because it actually looks good. Both of them are super expressive. But not only is the animation visually stunning, the action is too. It's super fast paced and it lacks any noticeable jank. Plus, we get to see the two play rock, paper, scissors. I love that so much. And I also really like the ending with Goku firing his biggest Kamehameha yet and Superman just pushing through with his heat vision. And the final scene is so heartwarming and I love it. I guess the only real problem with the animation is that there isn't a lot of usage of their techniques and abilities. Like, imagine if we saw a Theta State Superman fight Ultra Instinct Goku, or Superman using his Super Susano against Goku and his Gokano. There was a lot more that could have been done, but it didn't happen. That being said, it definitely was more of a character-focused episode than an ability-focused one, and to that extent, it works. The post-analysis is pretty good too, it does the same thing as the original, just better in my opinion. Do it again. And so, we reach the finale to this video. My favorite episode of Season 10. That episode of course being Scooby-Doo vs. Courage the Cowardly Dog. And yes, it is because of my nostalgia. I grew up with both these series, so naturally I have a pretty big connection to both. But enough about all that nostalgia talk, ugh. Let's go into why this episode is amazing. For starters, these analysis segments are among my favorite. The editing is some of the best of the season, courtesy of DJ and Galaxy Video Max. Not only that, but I love how they cover the Straight Outta Nowhere crossover. It makes both analyses feel like one big complete story. And speaking of complete big, com, uh, big complete stories, yeah, the animation actually has a story with Courage and Scooby alone in a haunted mansion while Eustace chases them down. And in the middle of everything, Courage and Scooby are fighting not to win, but to see which one of them has to take on Eustace. And that's what I like about this episode. They take into account the fact that the crossover between the two exists and expands upon it. How do you get two characters who are already established to be friends to fight to the death? Well, simple. Give them a common enemy that they're both scared of so they can fight amongst themselves. I find it genuinely funny that the entire episode is just them seeing which one has to fight Eustace, but they get so into it that they blow up the universe and make an Azura's Wrath reference on top of that. Top tier animation. Speaking of, the top tier animation. It looks so beautiful. Louise really outdid himself with this episode. Finally, we get to the post-analysis. And can I just say to everyone who was disappointed that the result was a draw, do you guys want to see a dog die? What kind of sickos are you? <laughs> result aside, the post-analysis is still really good going over how they're equal in every category except for their respective equipment like the Dark Matter Meteor or the Chest of Demons. Um... They do fail to acknowledge that Scooby can just destroy the Dark Matter Meteor and then trap Courage, but in their defense, they do say that Courage has the same abilities as Scoob, so theoretically, if Scooby destroys the Meteor, then Courage should just be able to rewind time and fix the Meteor, so... See, they thought of everything! <laughs> so yeah, Season 10 was a banger, no doubt about that. Would I say it's my favorite season of all time? Nah, I still think Season 9 holds that crown pretty well. Well, with the more matchups I actually care about. Anyway, what did you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? You probably do disagree because of Poke Bill Court number seven. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. And while you're at it, hit the subscribe button as well as the bell if you don't want to miss any more of my videos. Follow me on my socials in the description. Check out Lucara Boy's ranking as well as our reaction to Galactus vs. Unicron also in the description. With that in mind, I'll see you later, Cap Nation. Bye bye